Ladies and gentlemen, now in today's video, we're going to be breaking down everything that you need to know to dominate the International Women's Day Boss Rush Challenge. We're going to be having a bit of a chat about all six of the fights, the best counters, and all sorts of tips and tricks to make it a little bit easier. But a couple of things just before we get into this breakdown today. Uh, the first thing is that this is like an uncollected level challenge. So if you still, you know, haven't set foot in Act 5, you probably don't want to try this, man. Focus on progression focus on getting uncollected because that stuff's probably going to be a little bit easier but if you want to give it a try man just be prepared that it's going to be a little bit more difficult than what you're used to uh, and secondly that there are 14 days or two weeks to um do this challenge so if you're struggling a little bit on the first few days doing it just take the time to practice some of the fights and get used to some of the nodes that you might be unfamiliar with because there are certain fights and nodes like invade which take a little bit of practice and if you're not used to countering champions like emma frost and her special attacks then you might get a little bit wrecked so if you feel like you're hitting a wall don't just spend units like feel free to go back out of the quest and then back in and just keep on practicing and see how far you can get because the reward is 10,000 five star shards it's a really really good stack it's um uh, definitely worth it for the time invested um and you know once you get some of the good counters you get some of the fights down learn how to evade certain characters then it is quite straightforward for the most part but there are a couple of fights that are very tricky now in order of easiest to most difficult bosses i would say that they kind of fall into three different categories i'd say the x23 and the wasp quite straightforward fights there the medusa and clairvoyant they've got a bit going on might take a little bit of um uh, getting used to a bit of practice there and i would say the emma frost and the rogue are the most difficult encounters to deal with so we're going to snake around this quest and talk about uh, some of the bosses and some of the tactics so you start off with x23 created by laura grant who is the missus of brian grant fun fact of the day there uh, and this one has the matador node and spy on x23 so basically it's just a really straightforward fight there's not even a special three active in this one so you don't need to worry about like getting clipped or wrecked by that but if you just like spam bait out special ones then you can get power really really quickly it's just such an easy warm-up for this quest and a um uh, a very very nice fight there uh, so yeah really like that one then next up we have an invade medusa now if you're not used to fighting invade then this might be a little bit of a tricky fight to get used to but also if you go into the uncollected event quest you go into the terax chapter there's a whole invade path if you want a little bit of practice with this note but basically both champions have a hundred percent block penetration and 300 percent increased attack when hitting into block so ideally you want to like dash back when medusa's just about to hit you and this will prompt her to dash back and kind of hold a firm block and then you dash in you do a four combo and then dash away and try and rinse and repeat that and it takes a little bit of getting used to when fighting invade but once you get very comfortable fighting it it's quite a straightforward note however on parries you are going to take a um a lot of damage man you've got to be very aware that if you block or parry you're just going to get absolutely ruined and also this fight does have the special three active uh, and has counter strike pilfer and cornered as well so you need to be a little bit careful that you don't push medusa to the special three and counter strike she might go unblockable for 15 seconds after you dex uh, 10 times but even like with an iron fist six star iron fist i like, almost managed to one shot this fight uh so it's pretty straightforward once you get into the fight you just need like a solid damage dealer there so she's not too bad but again it requires a little bit of practice a little bit of getting used to the um invade node there uh then next up fight number three we have a wasp fight from miss insomnia with spiked armor dismay uh enhanced shock and plagued mind as well so a fairly straightforward wasp you are going to take a little bit of damage from the spiked armor node but essentially you just want to like stun and parry uh three combo into wasp and then bait out a special one heavy attack and if you do that that'll disable wasps evade for a few seconds and if you know how to fight wasp and you're used to it it's really really straightforward forward uh, but also if you're not used to it just youtube how to fight wasp and you can get used to the um 
the animations and how to disable her evade. But Wasp, once you used to find her, it's just a very, very easy champion. And even if you don't understand that, just like stun and then three combo and only hit into her while she's stunned. And it's just easy game, easy life. So that really isn't a bad fight at all. Uh, and then we start to get on to the slightly more difficult fight. So the first one brought to us by Katie Candy, which is Emma Frost here. Now, Emma Frost has aggression regeneration. Her special one is going to be unblockable and deal more damage. She also has oscillate and kinetic transference. So here, it's a lot of evading Emma Frost's special one for the most part, or special two if you feel... um. Uh, very confident doing that. So I maybe practice if you can in variant one. There's a very easy Emma Frost to get to in the very first chapter of that. If you need practice, just constantly dodging Emma Frost special one. But a lot of the mastery of this fight kind of comes down to dodging that special one and also overcoming the aggression regeneration with a champion that has some really good damage output that can either kind of ramp up or just come in and nuke that fight down. So to go over kind of a few counters and champions I've seen working very well for Emma Frost. Uh, Void, because of aggression and regeneration, is an amazing counter for this fight, because you can literally just sit back, apply the buffs, and it's easy game, easy life there. And also, during the defensive phase in Oscillate as well, he's just going to... Um, uh, stack those up while she's standing there. Uh, also, Ghost for the damage output. Fantastic champion as well. Uh, Guillotine 2099 uh, can ramp up and also partially reverse the healing if needed as well. But if you can keep the combo going, she's going to work quite nicely. Uh, Sentinel as well. Got a nice class advantage there and damage ramp up and can also block healing at certain intervals. Uh, Corvus Glaive, if you've ramped him up via the uh, X23 fight, he works really, really well. He also works exceptionally well for the invade fights as well so medusa and also rogue which we'll talk about in a second but corvus is amazing because you get guaranteed um uh, crit on block in those. Uh, also Warlock, the infection can heal block there. Mysterio has a heal block and some really good damage output. Stark and Spider-Man has some really good damage output. Captain America and Findy War. I've already got a two-star takedown recording for this fight, <laughs> but if you go for like the, uh, you know, the awakened ability and kind of build the team around that to reverse healing, it's just that a massive cheese of aggression regeneration. Star-Lord as well for the damage output. Uh, thing with full synergy team actually works really well for pretty much all of this challenge, man. A really good option to bring in if you want to. A uh, human torture is pre fight ability. Can, um, uh, nuke Emma Frost down nicely there. Even without it, uh, you can still like get a little bit of damage if he's stacked enough um, when Emma Frost is in her non-diamond form, so telepath form. Captain Marvel movie, if you've got her ramped up on an earlier fight, you've got the armor breaks, can just demolish Emma Frost there. Uh, Namor, you know, you go special three, get a burst cycle, she's down. Morningstar, if you play Morningstar for all of the fights so far, ramped her up, you should have plenty of damage output for this one, man. And also you're going to be able to, I don't know if you copy the regen with morning star but she's definitely got enough damage output to get through uh medusa you got armor breaks just take her out of that um uh, what is it? Diamond form there. Hyperion, you can armor break. Decent damage output as well. But really for this Emma Frost, if you are playing this fight well, any champion with high damage output will work. If you look on the live stream we did earlier of this challenge on the free-to-play account, I even used the champion, who's like the most basic, like kind of mid-tier damage dealer in the game. And we still got this fight done. It's kind of like a test of can you just constantly evade Emma Frost's special one. That's kind of the big thing. So as long as you make sure you practice on that uh, kind of get used to it then you should be all right for the emma frost fight and then next up we have rogue so rogue is the creation of dragon from the umcoc podcast and rogue is um I think the most uh, annoying of all the bosses, uh, but I've already got a two-star takedown with Void. So Rogue has, I think it's four nodes. She's got Aggression Regeneration. She's got Invade as well. That's the node from Medusa. So these nodes, they're kind of, uh, yeah, they kind of play against each other, man. Just really annoying to deal with both of them because, again, it takes away your parry uh, without taking massive damage and your ability to block there as well. There's also Brawl. So every 10 seconds, both champions gain unstoppable passive for five seconds so first 10 seconds of the fight you've got um 
no unstoppable there but then every like five seconds it rotates like unstoppable no unstoppable and finally there's aspect of depth so if you get hit by any special attack it's an instant ko there and special three is also active so rogue it's just a massive massive pain of a fight um but but some of the options i've seen work really really well uh avoid void if you just don't attack into her kind of just play around her try and hit into the block when you can and push her back and just evade in the corner you can get all the debuffs up and heal reversal so even i've got a two star um uh, void takedown on the channel if you want to see that uh, Corvus Glaive if you've got him ramped up at least one charge and you've got him at like five star rank four or rank five he's going to do so much damage via the invade node so if you're very very quick you might be able to outpace a lot of uh, aggression regeneration or just a few revives there uh, Warlock if you get the infection active you can counter aggression uh, regeneration there uh, Ghost as well has some sweet damage output Sentinel you can have some sweet damage output output there as well and also deal a decent chunk of damage to kind of get through some of the uh, invade stuff and you can fire a special two onto the um uh, the block for some really really nice damage as well and then going back we have sunspot sunspot actually is, is somewhat of a counter at least in my testing today to the invade node because whenever you have an incinerate on the opponent and you parry it's a guaranteed like zero damage there so he's like the only champion in the game that has that guaranteed zero damage i think on the invade node parries so yeah he works really well and then just get to like two three stacks of flare state special two and the fight is over so it's going to be a little bit tricky man but it is definitely doable with sunspot a uh, thing with full synergies again you can get a little bit battered on thing and still make some um uh, pretty epic comebacks there. Uh, Hyperion's got some pretty sweet damage output. Mysterio, Captain Marvel movie, Stark and Aunt Spider-Man, Morningstar again if you've played her for all other fights, just spamming that special one. Should work in a very interesting fashion. I've seen some people do this fight as well with Domino Full Trinity to kind of extend that stun duration. But really, any champion with high immediate damage output that does not rely on debuffs will get you through this rogue encounter. If you ideally bring like two or three of those champions, you just go for one if it's like a really really good character but you gotta remember at the first 10 seconds of the fight uh you don't have to deal with brawl and brawl is kind of the main thing the combination of having that unstoppable for five seconds and then just aggression regeneration starts building up is really what does a lot of people over on this fight so if you just go in the first 10 seconds maybe you can afford one parrier or two parries on a 40 percent revive or bash out an intercept there get like 10 15 hits with a um high damage output champion and then like you know three to five revives and the fight is down and for ten thousand five star shards you know it's not a bad deal in the end but just keep that in mind if you are just getting absolutely wrecked by the combination of unstoppable and aggression regeneration just going for those first 10 seconds deal as much damage as you possibly can and then exit out before she starts regenerating and going unstoppable and going crazy so again it's a bit of an annoying fight if you've got void cheat code champion if you can play super super well but there are plenty of good options and then finally we have black widow clairvoyance so she has mighty charge safeguard empowered immunity matador and curse of death so this is a um a bit more of a slow burning fight she is going to bleed you via her heavy attacks and medium attacks so you do need to keep that in mind and also whenever she charges at you uh, she's going to deal a fair amount of damage and also remove all of the debuffs there so this one is a bit of a slow burner fight uh, for the majority of champions you really want any characters that can deal damage over time outside of a bleed and any champions that are bleed immune so you don't take any damage in this fight but there are plenty and plenty of good options like a mega red ghost thing there are just so many crazy characters out there human torch if you have uh even without his pre-fight ability um uh, should work really really nicely here as well uh, but once you got past like the emma frost and rogue this fight really isn't too bad again she does have the matador node so you only gain power when she throws a special attack there and also you need to be aware um that she's going to gain clairvoyance charges and very similar to the uncollected boss that we saw last year once she has 20 of those she's going to be able to cheat death and kind of revive up at the end so keep that in mind if you've uh, been going for a long time against her 
her. She's probably got that cheat death active when you go for the KO. So just make sure you don't let your guard down when you're about to kill her because she's probably going to regen up a little bit. Again, any kind of bursty champion, champion with good damage output is going to be able to handle that final phase. So it really isn't like too much hassle there at all. Kind of the main problems I think for a lot of people are going to be the... um. Uh, the Rogue and Emma Frost. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of today's video guide. If you did enjoy it, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. And if you want to see my main account and also my free-to-play run for this challenge and some of the two-star takedowns, all of the videos will be in the description and also comment section of this video guide as well. So if you did enjoy it, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Aside from that, thank you very much for watching. Take care, and I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day.